let's get going. Let's start with ETH. Um, we're going to start with ETH because it's a little bit more organized than BTC. I, I have a lot more structure for ETH than for BTC at the moment. Um, also, one of the one of the things I wanted to let you guys know is that I, I it depends on the structure that BTC is going to make. But I am more inclined to be focusing my trading in the next month on ETH and XRP rather than BTC for two reasons. First, the ranges are nicer for, for the two coins. And second, um, the trading has been nicer on, um, on, on ETH and XRP compared to BTC. I'm risking the same amount in, in terms of stop losses for, for BTC but the rewards are nearly as um, as high as XRPs or ETH. Same traps across the board, um, especially before the FOMC this week, but at least for ETH and XRP, it's worth, it's, it's worth risking that stop loss more than for BTC at the moment, as far as I'm, I'm reading the charts. So um, I'm going to start with ETH. Um, we're going to look at the daily structure, then map out the weekend and the Friday levels. I'm going to do the same for BTC. And then I'm going to look at the news that's going to come out today. I'm going to look at the S&P and I'm going to look at the DXY. So what we have for ETH at the moment is the daily support holding along this trend line in, in two points. So we have this daily trend line. We have this horizontal line here. I removed it, but um, I'm going to add it now for you to see. So we have this horizontal line here, this range more so than a line. And then we have the point of control, which is the second white line. And I removed the reason why I removed the horizontal line is because for the FRVP, the point of control, the white line here, is in confluence with this ascending wedge. Ascending wedges, as you know, they break to the downside, 70%, 30% to the upside. Now, there are a couple of momentum indicators that are showing we might have bottomed out. That's why, at the moment, I am holding my... Um, I'm holding, I'm holding my, my capital rather than putting it in one direction or another because I'm waiting for the four-hour trend change confirmation, which you might have heard me. Uh, to me, is either holding the 20 MA or holding the 20 EMA. Either of these, we if we have two candles closing on the four-hour above these, we are likely to continue to the upside. <clears throat> We haven't yet back tested these though. So just to go back to the momentum indicator that might that 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 shows us that we might have bottomed out, it's the daily stock that not only has reached the bottom line, it does reach it quite often. Um, it's not so it's not such a rare aside. Here it did, here it did, here it did, here it came close. So that's not that's not the point, but the point is that it's reached the bottom and now it's in a V shape up. This is also quite normal before any drop continues. So we do have a little bit of a breather. However, there's another indicator that shows um, decreasing decreasing a momentum in in selling, which is the MACD. So if we're looking at the MACD, we can see that between this and this moment we have an ascending slope so the way for instance between this moment and this moment in buying there was a descending slope indicating a sell is coming we have the same thing now to the upside so that that these to me are reasons to consider that the local bottom is in for now now I'm not saying that we're not going to break out from this wedge. On the contrary, we could go up, back test the 20 or the 55 on the daily and then start heading down. So what I'm what I'm saying is for the moment 
I am, I am waiting for better signals to show direction. We are below the 20 EMA on the daily, which means we are likely to move down. We are below the 20 EMA on the weekly as well. Now, if I flip um, to the weekly MACD, the weekly MACD is telling me a different story. The weekly MACD is without a doubt indicating uh, a major spill is about to happen. It's crossed over and we already start having selling volumes appear. Um, now, the MACD becomes stronger once this midline gets crossed, so the trend accentuates. At the moment, we are nowhere near the midline, but we do have a very clear um, we do have a very clear direction downwards. So the weekly is quite strong for the down. We're below the 20 EMA on the weekly, and the stochastic on the weekly is down as well. So it had a moment there where it flicked up and down, but um, now it's down. Okay. Now, let's do a little bit of a trade setup on um, on the MAs. So here's the four hour. I know it looks like a one hour chart. I was looking at it this morning thinking this looks like a one hour chart because of all the sideways. It looks like the second. I'll have a sip of coffee. We have broken out of this triangle structure. This triangle structure had a one, two, three, four, five, six, and on seven it broke down. Back tested here, this area, not necessarily this line, but it's very, very hard to talk about lines in all of this sideways. Like, look what's got what's happening here. It's like literally like the spine of the sideways movement is the support and resistance. Now, in terms of in terms of levels, where I see this weekend going, and I will do the trade setup and the weekend levels on this MA chart on the four hour because I think the four hour, I know they get pierced and I know, I know they can get broken. But if we set our targets and um, along the MAs to take profits, or if we set our uh, entries on the 702 after the MA has been tested, we can't go too wrong. More often than not, we will be right rather than wrong. So this would be the this would be the technical target 1540 for this triangle wedge. Why is this important? Because this will be the bottom of our setup. Um, if we are to to put the fib on the daily. So hold 1540 in mind. Fifteen forty is below the zero five and the golden pocket. So this would be one of the one of one level for the daily swing to correct that. And again, we might take it with a pinch of salt because um, once momentum gets going. Once momentum gets going, we might get to 1530 or even the 1500. We know ETH loves the 1500, um, the 1500, um, the, the 100 levels. So this would also be in line with our horizontal levels that we have on the four hour as well. Now, going back to the MAs. So 1540 here would be my main my main area of take profit if I were in a short. Um, I am looking for a short to be honest for today. I am uh, I am looking for a short entry position. I missed this one too. Um, I will be looking around New York opening time to see if it offers a one two on the one hour. Um, Now the bottom would be 1530 because I, I do believe that this here let me just let me just where's my okay so this one here was the M formation this is push away level level one push away level two, lift, and now we're going to have push away level three. 
one, two, three steps down. So this is the common pattern that I watch for in terms of movement. M at the top, and I call these two A's towards the low, and then hitting the low, and then W formation here. And on the way up, I'm looking for the same, these, the same A's on the way up. You could be looking at them as V's, but I, I look at the, the consolidation and then lifting up, M formation, and on the way down we go. So I believe we might have another step down. Now I'm saying might because of what's happened. You will understand my doubt. It's not that I can't read it, but what happened here is a bit suspicious to me because this looked like a beautiful M formation, but then we pushed down the next level and then we lift it up into the same space. So this to me is suspicious because the lift, the lift shouldn't be in the space. So for instance, here we had the double top formation. We didn't have an M. We pushed away, we lifted at the base of that double top, pushed down, lifted, pushed down. Here was an extra lift because again, of all the choppiness, push down again and lift it. And again, here's where you might get caught. Here in, in a move like this, you might lose a stop loss. And I, for XRP, for instance, XRP has made me pay two stop losses before actually getting into a, a short last week because of movements like this, because of all the sideways. So here, what happened here to me gets me to think is Is this the first level or is this the first level? I would go with option two because of how we back tested it. Here, the, it wasn't a back test, it was entering peak formation space. When you enter peak formation space, you make another peak formation. So, to me, entering this peak formation space led to this and this is a four hour chart it's not a one hour chart so I'm, again i know it looks confusing with so much sideways but i believe that we have only done step one step two and now we're lifting into step three we need to have two lifts like so and then we bottom out and between this space, this space, and this space, we make three steps down. And levels are the toughest thing to estimate. That's why you need other indicators. But where we are right now, I believe we might be, again, I'm going to put a nice path to this. We might be going up to backtest the 20 and then come down. If we go up to backtest the 20 and we happen to stay on the 20, we might go all the way back up. And in which case, um, again, not necessarily all the way back up. The reason why I put it to the line is because I like the patterns better, but we could just go to the 200 MA on the four hour, depending on where that is at that moment. So these would be the two trades that I would have in mind. And I'm not, uh, I'm gonna wait for my one hour signals to, to show. At the moment, the reason why it was telling you I'm looking for uh, a short position is because of what's happening on the one hour stochastic. Um, I'll show you on traders reality. Here, and another price label here. Okay, so here these these two would be these two would be the levels that I have in mind. Fifteen, fifteen forty. I don't know why I was a little bit more optimistic. There we go. Fifteen thirty, fifteen forty. I leave it where it is. So that's that would be that would be what I what I 
would see as a possible trading scenario. If the 20 gets backtested, depending on how the stochastic is on the four hour, on the one hour, I will probably be looking for a short if it is if both of them are to the top. If the 20 gets backtested, and again, um, if the 20 gets backtested get, uh, and turned into support, I would I would be looking for a long, but I would give it some time. Usually, usually the 20. If you look at, I'm not going to look at that because that is just pure madness. Um, if you look at that, it, it's going to take a couple of four hour candles up and down to consolidate that 20. Unless it is a, a market maker move and they, they push through it and they don't give anybody the chance to get into the trade. Um, but I would be looking for a back test on the one hour of that 20. And that the equivalent of that 20 on the one hour would be the 50. Okay, now um, this is this is ETH on the MAs. Quite a big difference from where the four hour 200 is compared to the to the one hour. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you the trader's reality to understand why I'm looking for a short. So um, unfortunately, I I, um, I I didn't plan for this. I didn't plan for this entry because um, I I I I don't trust it so much. However, I'm looking at the stock RSI on the on the one hour, and it is looking like it's top there. We also have a reversal vector here on the one hour. What we don't have at the moment is a divergence. So the momentum is going up on the regular RSI. Um, oh, no, sorry. Sorry, guys. I take that back. Coffee hasn't kicked in yet. We do have a divergence. Momentum is going up, but prices are going down. So even though momentum is going up, prices cannot push up. There will be, I think, a touch to this 50 EMA, so that's why I prefer to wait at the moment. It is, it is, there is a lot going on at the moment in terms of fundamentals, in terms of what's going on with Binance. Um, so I prefer to, to be a little bit more patient and, and wait for direction. It's hard to estimate direction as is because of everything, uh, all, all the choppy sideways and then the snappy moves. But the, the 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 daily MAs are still there, and we are still below them. So I'll take I'll take the the trend as down for now because both the daily and the weekly are in confluence. Now today we might just see a small push down to the low ADR sixteen oh nine, and then a lift to the high ADR seventeen twenty. That can happen. Fridays generally are for that. Fridays are great for, I've noticed, uh, Fridays are great for taking a position towards the end of the day rather than trading through the day because generally it's 15 minute trades and you would have to be watching every candle and taking your profit. Unless you go, of course, with the high and the low ADR targets um, and you, you might close a position sooner. Okay, so that's that's it. Um, just to summarize, let's go back to the weekly levels on on the four hour. We we do have two possible directions, and and the confirmation of those directions is the twenty MA or the twenty EMA on the four hour. If the 20 EMA is back tested and gets rejected the way it's done, so put a Put a 702, sorry, not a 702, 702s for X for P. Put a uh, 0618 on the swing. This would be a one hour swing and you would get a nice entry before the drop. If the 20 on the four hour gets confirmed as support and you will see that on the one hour, you can let it do its thing. It'll probably come up to the 50 and then consolidate between the 20 and the 50. It generally consolidates between the 20 and the 50 before moving to the next level. It also moves up in 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 and around the same levels as it's moved down. So if this is our bottom formation, 
then this is going to be one level of consolidation. The way it consolidated here on the left is going to consolidate on the right. Then it's going to move one level up here. The way it consolidated here, it's going to consolidate here. And that would be probably the peak formation, level 1, level 2, level 3. Okay. I'm just going to remove this line because I don't like it. All right, now let's do the same for BTC. And now BTC is, again, in a descending wedge. So on the daily, we have opposing patterns for BTC and ETH. BTC is descending, which makes it more prone to a lift. We are holding support, though. This is the common thing. We're holding support the way we are holding support for ETH on the point of control or hold, holding support on the trend line for BTC. The FRVP is a, is a whole other story for BTC and I'll show it to you. Here is the ascending trend in sales um, for the MACD. MACD is still down on the daily. Let's do the weekly here. Weekly is down. We started seeing sales here. We haven't yet crossed the midline and we are below the 20 on the weekly. So the trend for the weekly and the daily is down. They are both in confluence. I believe that the downtrend is more likely than the uptrend. Now, this is the FRVP, which shows a different situation for me. That's why I, I said I'm going to start with ETH because it's a little bit more organized. You can see this huge gaping hole between, between the high level um, support and resistance, low level support and resistance and point of control. The point of control for BTC is 16,800. So at 16,800, we have a lot of space to move between that and reaching it would probably be complete panic for the market if we're to go from 25k to 16 17 that would be super panic now on the four hour I was trying to make sense of this structure, like you've seen ETH and its drops make sense, BTC not so much. Like this is, this is generally a collapsing pattern. If I am to think of this part here as the M formation, push away, lift up. It gets into the M formation, but let's push away, lift up, push away. This is the reason why I will be hanging for the moment my trading boots for BTC and focusing more on ETH and XRP. Where are we? <laughs> this is this how many levels do we have here within this four hour space because to me this looks as scary as that frvp sorry i don't want to use emotional language this use uh this this looks to me as spread out as the the frvp so if i'm to try to define this as two levels I'd say this one here was one level this one here was two levels we're gonna go down for third level 22.5 even a little bit lower 22.3 even a little bit lower 21.6 and I have a couple of uh, horizontal level charts that would um, estimate that it is hard to map it out the way for instance i've mapped out ETH. it's it's harder for btc because of all the sideways and also this is a four hour range a sideways four hour range um it's 9.9 percent .9%, but we have it's 9.9 .9 between these 
these lines and it looks deceivingly good to trade but if you're actually making smaller horizontal um, smaller horizontal ranges where price moves in you'll see that the the, the range is 3.6 it's very small um, of course with a 0 0.5 stop loss and a 3.6 percent um, gain you might say oh we're still we're still gonna win yes and no because that 0 0.5 gets me for instance in order to put a 0 0.5 in a trade I would have to put 30% or 50% of my capital. If I put in 30% of my capital, that means out of that 3.6%, amazingly, if I catch the very top and the very bottom, I get 30% of that. So I get 1.6. So I risk 5% for 1 1.6, 1.2, 1.2. So it's a 2 to 1, almost 3 to 1 ratio. It adds up, but it's not worth it. Because th these are 4-hour swings. 4-hour swings generally have a 20-30% range where you can really DCA in on the way down your capital. Like I did with ETH um, last week, and I, and I kept you updated when I DCA'd. So that kind of trade makes it profitable because I can I can get some profits, DCA them back in, and then at the end I've made, let's say, maybe I haven't made all the, I don't know, 9% range. I've made maybe 60 or 70% range, but that's, that's good because my target is 1x a month, so 100% every month doubling the capital every month so this is the this is the um the the reason why at the moment i find btc challenging to chart and to trade and i think it's quite normal for for traders to be focusing on different coins depending on their different moves now here we are moving back and forth between these levels. Here is the daily support at 25k, another daily support at 26.8, uh, the resistance is 27.6. So we're back above the daily support. We have the stock on the four hour that is close to the overbought area, close to being maxed out at 90. At the moment and if we're looking at traders reality just to see where we are when our stock is down for our stock is up let's have a look at the daily the daily I think similarly to uh, ETH is up and we have of course the 200 EMA on the daily that is holding price action once BTC loses this 200 EMA on the daily we are in trouble well we're not in trouble if we're in, in, in short positions but the whole market will see a lot of red once this is lost okay now let's um, I'm gonna be using these levels for the weekend levels um, I already have the title here um, I'll be using the 21.7 as support and resistance. Current backtest area is the same, the 20 EMA on the 4 hour on, on this chart. And again, we have the possibility to go up to the next level of support and resistance 26.5 could we get there absolutely we could i thought we were gonna there's liquidity around 27400 and i thought we were gonna get we were, before the uh, fomc collapse which was this one i thought this swing was gonna get up to the 27400 level to collect that liquidity it didn't do it but it's still um it's the liquidity is still there we might still see it i will be adjusting these levels if we if there we go 
if we get through the 20, 26.5. Okay, now here we are with um, both BTC and ETH having had a drop on the day. They don't have a double bottom structure on the daily. Here's a double top structure on the daily. Here there's no double bottom structure on the daily. And by double bottom, I mean there has to be a, a swing down and a swing up for the double top. There has to be a swing up and a swing down for the double bottom, a W formation. We don't have that. I think the next move will be to make that happen. If, if that level holds, which I don't think it will for ETH. I think we're going to go a little bit lower for ETH. But if that level holds, we are looking at a reversal to the upside to backtest the 20 and the 55 EMAs on the daily. What news could we have today? As you probably know, the FOMC um, Wednesday was a complete and utter uh, show because um, they gave the market what the market wanted, which was a pause in the rates, but they hit the market, shocked the market with a terminal rate of 5.6. At the moment, I think there were nine members for a 5.6 rate, which involves two more hikes. So no hike um, decreases for this year as the market expected. On the contrary, two more hikes. We have a consumer sentiment and an inflation uh, and the inflation expectations at 3, 3 p.m. today. So might see some volatility there. It's not, as far as I know, it's not extreme volatility like the FOMC or the non-farm unemployment rate. Now, with the FOMC giving the market what, what they wanted initially, which showed in the market being quite stagnant, flat, uh, but then the terminal rate be going up from 5.1 to 5.6 that was a shock and that caused um, caused a drop initially now what happened after that is more interesting because here we are on the daily s p we have broken the previous high we've broken august 2022 we are at the moment on the daily stock at the top, the very top, the 100 line. And we are printing a lot of bearish divergences. Even the regular RSI is going up to levels. It's rarely gone before. <coughs> November 2021. Let me just check when November 2021 happened. Here is November 2021. So there was a, a pushback, a higher high, and then a drop. Now, we are, there we go. If we are to look at the levels for the S&P, this is peak formation, level two, level three. We might say we're done. I'm going to remove this because now I see it is very intelligible for me, but not so intelligible for you. I'm going to remove the pink lines because we don't really need them anymore. Like we've opened more space. Okay, so if we... If we have a look at the bigger picture, so yes, we can we can see more intermediary levels, I'd say even more than three. But if we look at the bigger picture and take this formation here as the M formation, so this big mama over here, push down, lift up, push down. What is this? This is this is either lift up. And it should have gone lower. But if this is a W rounded bottom formation for the lift off, we need to again challenge the 46, 39 and challenge the previous peak, which could happen. 
before Wednesday, there were massive, mm, mm, a lot of multimedia publications, uh, <coughs> multimedia media publications, calling for a bull market. This is technically, this meets the requirements for the bull market. We've broken the previous high, we've broken out of here, we're holding all the daily support. Can I see it topping out? Yes, I can. Can it continue? Yes, I can. Yes, it can, because it is holding absolutely everything it needs to hold. It is maxed out on the immediate momentum. Absolutely it is. Like This is the weekly stock that is up at the 100. This could cause a massive pullback. Do we lift like this from here? We had one, two, three higher highs. No challenge of this bottom here to catch people out. No panic stage. This is odd to me. Are the market makers just giving people a free ticket into the bull market without the panic sell? That's odd. They're all, the way there is euphoria at the top, we have panic at the bottom. So we haven't had that panic. There, that panic hasn't happened. We've had a couple of bank runs. We've had a couple of crypto uh, exchanges dropping, but we, have, we haven't had that panic. So just, just to be clear, at the moment, the S&P is holding all the support necessary to continue its lift, its bull run, whatever this is. Is the momentum getting exhausted? Yes, it is. But it could still continue. When do we know that we have stopped and reversed to the downside? When we break daily support. So if we break the 20 on the daily, orange line here, 50 on the daily here, then we can say, okay, we've broken the support on the daily the way the coins are. The coins are below the 20 EMAs or MAs on the daily. We say down, the trend is down. Now for the stocks, the trend is up. The DXY is the opposite. The DXY was trying to get more support on daily and it failed at the moment it's down in the domes it looks like it's gonna get to 100 which is the 800 ema on the daily i would love to see it find support there finding support there for the dxy would probably mean another top for the coin so going again one more lift towards uh towards the top for the coins um and if that support breaks and the DXY collapses, we know that this is going to be a lift for the coins. And you can see the DXY and the S&P, they've gone opposite directions. We've had a, a trend up for the past week for the S&P. And here it is, the DXY moving down. Coins have moved down too. So coins, it's been a flip of the, of the, of the uh, usual usual correlation so usually there is inverse correlation but we don't have that inverse correlation so just just to sum up the main ideas the s p is holding daily support for a bull run the dxy has lost daily support and it looks like it it's going to push down some more this is generally inversely correlated to the coins but lately it's gone in the same direction so if the lately trend continues not late if the recent tendency continues the xy finding support lower would be in line with the coins making um another low a double bottom on the daily that double bottom that i that i was telling you about that w structure but at the moment we have um we have to wait we have to see it's it looks like we're getting close to the end of a trend and it looks like this trend is was up and now it's getting closer to the end and it's going to flip to the downside for the coins for the S&P that that shows on the daily and the weekly for the coins that shows more on the weekly the weekly trend is down for now so I hope I haven't been too repetitive this morning. Um, thank you for joining me. 
I will keep you updated during the sessions and I'll put up the weekend levels as soon as I hang up on this call. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you Monday morning. Thank you.